Hey guys, Ms. Bosco here. I wanted to give you some guidance for the extension, which is step eight of the What's Up with Circuits lab. This is definitely the toughest part. Um, I'm available for extra help and just hang in there, work your way through it, okay? All right, so hopefully this picture and these instructions will help you out. Let's take a look. First of all, you're gonna build the same circuit that you had in step five, a nice simple series circuit with a light bulb, an ammeter, wires, a battery, and more wires, done, okay? and a little switch. All right, so once you've got your ammeter in there, we're also going to be using our voltmeter to match the voltage, okay? When you attach your voltmeter, it's really important to put the voltmeter probes on both ends of a section of wire plus battery, okay? As shown in the picture. The reason for this, we're gonna be adjusting the resistance of the wires. So if I only have my probes on either end of the battery, I'm not actually measuring the resistance across a section of wire. So I wanna make sure it goes probe, wire, battery, other probe, okay? Now these numbers are what we're gonna be using to record in our data table, the voltage and the current. So if we click over here, you can see, oh, build my circuit, woohoo, easy peasy, grab my ammeter, love it. The switch is down there. There is that battery. Oh my god, it's beautiful and glorious. Okay, notice if I close my switch, it's a closed circuit, it's going. All right, then again, my voltmeter. Probe over here, probe over here. Now we're all set up. So again, we have to change the actual resistivity of the wire, the resistance. So if we come over here, see this option? Press that plus button. That's what you're gonna be messing with in order to make these numbers change, okay? So I filled in one of them for you. If you look all the way at the lots section, let's just see what happens. Sweet mother of pearl, okay? Ooh, crazy. Okay, so great times, great times. So these numbers right here, fabulous. That's what we're gonna be using, okay? So, Looking in our lab, those numbers would go in the data table under voltage and current. Now, depending on how much wire you use, um, you're gonna get slightly different numbers. That's why I got 7.9 versus 8.0. It's okay, just carry on. You can use these numbers that I provided for this part, okay? If you get different numbers and you wanna put them in, that's totally fine. I just wanted to give you guys a ballpark, All right? Another thing you might find helpful, if you reduce the size of your window, you can actually, uh -huh, I know I'm tricky like that. You can build your circuit and have it present separately. That way, as you're going through the lab, it's easier to go back and forth between the simulation and your data table, okay? So again, as you adjust this, those numbers are gonna change, okay? Now let's look for a moment. Okay, I'm gonna leave this switch open so I don't give away all the answers, but in your data table, it asks you to stop at five different places. Basically, we're just doing equal increments. Start towards this end, about a quarter way through, about halfway through, about three quarters way through, and about the other end. Okay, so that's where you're gonna be measuring your five data points. So each time you pause, here, record the data. Here, record the data. Get it? Okay. So you'll have your data table filled in, and then you're gonna work on your graph. So the graph is the tricky part, but let's read here. Use your data to create a line graph on the graph grid provided, which is a picture. So all you have to do to edit it is double click on it to edit, okay? Or you can click once and select the edit button. You're gonna put the voltage on the X axis and current on the Y axis, all right? So voltage, meaning this column right here, these will be the numbers that help inform the X axis, current will inform what we're doing with the y-axis. Now remember your graphing skills, okay? We practice this at the beginning of the year. When you graph, you look at your data set and that tells you, based on the lowest and the highest numbers, what your scale should be between. You don't put these numbers on your axis. You just help you decide what your axis scale should be. And because you guys are watching this video and you're so diligent, I am actually going to give you your x-axis scale because it's really tricky. We're gonna use something called a break, okay? All of our numbers will be between eight and nine for this, about, okay? Maybe slightly lower than eight, but that's okay. So if you need to remind yourself what a break is, there's a little video there for you. 
Okay, so check it out. You can put this for your x-axis scale. Notice these are not the same as the data points. These are nice spaced out even intervals. Okay, so they're equal intervals. I used a break right there, meaning I'm skipping from 0 to 8.25. Okay, and then I'm just going up by 0 0.25. 8.5, 8.75, and 9. Notice that I also filled in the x-axis and label. This is voltage with a unit, volts, right? So you guys have to determine what would the y-axis scale be based on the numbers that you get for current. Look at your highest and lowest numbers to help you decide what to go up to, okay? Um, you're allowed to move this text box out of the way if you want to add another number right there. That's totally fine. But don't forget to do your label with units and your scale. And then you're going to plot your data points accordingly. Okay, you also need a title for this graph. All right. So I hope that helped. Again, as a reminder, probe, Y resistivity, fill in the data table, and make your graph. All right. Send me an email or pop into the extra help link during the appropriate times if you need it. Okay, guys? Good luck. Bye-bye.